I greet you with the words of the psalmist where he said in Psalms 116 verse 1 and 2, I love the Lord because he had heard my voice and my supplication, because he had inclined his ears unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. It was the words of the songwriter who wrote based on Hebrews 13 and verse number three. He had said, I'll never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. His word can never be denied. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean where one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day over all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. What beautiful words to rise stir in the morning and to be encouraged knowing that the God that we serve will take care of us. I will be bringing my last devotion from Judges chapter 4 and uh, final time we are going to look at the man Barak with a contagious faith. Obviously this contagious faith was initiated by someone who transmitted this system to others who eventually got infected by it. Hence this infection got spread like wildfire as it was given the right fueling condition. I want to go back and read for you from Judges chapter 4. Remember, we are looking at Hebrews chapter 11. We were reminded that time will not permit to speak of all these different ones in verse 32 and Barak was one that was named there. But in Judges chapter 4, I want to read verse 9, or verse 6 to 9, and then verse 14 to 24. Verse 6 says, And she sent and called Barak the son of Abinoam out of Kedish Naphtali, and said unto him, Had not the Lord God of Israel commanded saying, Go and draw towards Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun, and I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, and his chariot, and his multitude, and I will deliver him in thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Now look at verse number 14 to verse number 24. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord had delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomforted Sisera 
and all his chariots and all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the hosts unto Herosek of the Gentiles. And all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left, howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite. And there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had thrown in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And he opened, and she opened a, a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. I, again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be, when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here? That thou shalt say, No. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent, and took a hammer in her hand, and went softly unto him, and smote the nail into his temples, and fastened it into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him, and said unto him, Come, and I'll show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin the captain of Canaan before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin the king of Canaan until they had destroyed Jabin king of Canaan. What a word this morning. Yeah a word of encouragement where he ran away from Barak but in running away from Barak he ran onto this lady and she took a nail drove it in his temple and killed him what a fate it is good to have faith in God what it is the substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen. For in Mark 11, verse 22, Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Faith in God is always needed. Why? For that brings us in communion with God. Now, while it is good to have faith, it is better to have strong faith. In Romans chapter 4 and verse 20, the Bible said, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. As I have noticed here, unbelief causes you and I to stagger. That is, he or she is not living straight. Alcohol consumption causes one, when it is taken, to stagger. And when you see that person staggering, you know that that person is drunk. <laughs> and like manner, the believers stagger by unbelief. Staggers in his life by unbelief. Mm. There's a third thing I've noticed. While it is good to have faith, it is better to have strong faith. It is best to be full of faith. To be full of something is to leave no room for anything else. In Acts chapter 6 verse 5, the Bible says, And the saint pleased the whole multitude. They chose Stephen, a man, full 
of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And Philip, and Prochorus, and Niker, and Taman, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, and the proselyte of Antioch. Then it is better than the best to possess the full assurance of faith. Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. When faith is built on the word, you will always be full of assurance in regards to that faith. For then there is an abundance of confidence in the Lord. One can have great faith. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 28, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. What did he say? Great is thy faith. Again in Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 10, and when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And then finally, with all of that said, I must say, a contagious faith bring blessings to others. That's the man Barak after the battle, and he'll tell you, thank God for people like Deborah who went with him and was not afraid to go because she knew that there was no way Sisera and his host could win. That is because the Lord said, I will deliver Sisera and his host into thine hand. You can always build your faith on the word of God. And then in Galatians chapter five and verse number six, for in Jesus Christ neither the circumcision availeth anything or uncircumcision, but faith which walketh by love. What kind of faith do you have this morning? Hmm? I trust that you have a great faith. Our Father, we thank you so much for all that we have learned from this account. And we pray, Lord, that this account just sharing morning after morning would have encouraged some of your children, Lord, not to be fearful, but to be faithful. Bless your people now. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Be with each and everyone throughout this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.